Hello, I'm Asri and I'm Inda. So uh, in this video, we're gonna do an assessment on the special test at the ankle joint and also the range of motion and muscle strength in the elbow joint. So let's get started. Okay, so before we go to the do the assessment, we need to introduce ourselves to the patient first and then tell the patient about uh, what assessment that we're gonna do. Okay, so now I want to perform anterior drawer test at the ankle joint. Its purpose is to check the anterior talofibular ligament. So, patient in the line supine position with the foot at the ankle joint is hanging on the edge of the bed and the examiner position is the side of the patient so the procedure is so one hand will stabilize at the anterior distal of the tibia and then the other hand is grasp the calcaneus and then to perform that we can give an anterior directed force from the uh, one hand the, at the calcaneus so the positive sign if there's a pain that feels of the passion or there's, there's a translation uh, anterior translation at the ankle joint next is uh, to perform the posterior drawer test its purpose is to check the posterior talofibular ligament at the ankle. So, a patient is same, still in the supine position with the ankle and foot is hanging on the edge of the bed. And then the examiner is on the side of the patient. And then the procedure is we can maintain the ankle in the natural position. One hand grip the calcaneus and then the other hand is stabilizing posterior distal tibia and then we, uh, we can give a force posterior force at the calcaneus so the positive sign if there is any excessive uh, posterior movement gap or click sound at the ankle now I want to perform a talar tilt test. It's to check the ligament at the lateral aspect of the ankle joint. So, in order to check the anterior talofibular ligament, position the patient's foot in the plantar flexion and then bring the ankle into inversion movement with the stabilizing hand at the anterior distal of the tibia and then the next to check the calcaneofibular ligament uh, position the ankle joint of the patient in the neutral position stabilizing uh, the distal tibia of the patient and give the inversion movement and then eversion movement and then the other to check the posterior talofibular ligament position the ankle joint of the patient in the maximum dorsiflexion stabilize the tibia at the anterior and give a inversion movement so the positive sign if the patient complain about pain during the assessment or if we found if there's any excessive movement or gap at the lateral aspect of the ankle joint. So now I want to perform a Thompson test. So it's purpose if to check uh, Achilles tendon tightness. So the patient in the lying prone position with the X minor in the side of the patient. So to perform that, we can squeeze the calf section or the gastrocnemius area. So the positive sign, if there is no occurrence of the plantar flexion movement at the ankle joint, and the negative sign, if there is a occurrence of the plantar flexion movement.
So this is the negative sign of the Thomson test. I want to check the range of motion of the elbow in the flexion, extension, and also the pronation and the spination of the patients. First, I want to check the active range of motions so the patient can do the range of motion or the movement by herself. First, I want to check the active range of motion. The patient position is the sitting. And in here, I want to check the left hand of the patients. Okay, uh, can you relax your positions? Yes, and after that, can you do the extension your elbow fully? And can you relax? And after that, can you do the fully of the patients? Okay, relax. So the range of motion of the elbow in extensions in is a zero until 10 degree and for the elbow flexion is 150 degree and we, we can check with our goniometer the axis in the humerus condyle in here is the body prominence the stationary it is parallel with the humerus bone and for the moving arm in the forearm and we can as the patient actively extension of the elbow and flexion of the elbow so next i want to check the active range of motion for supination and the pronation position so the position of the patient is a sitting position and i want to check it from the coronal side and i ask the patient to do flexion of the elbow 90 degree can you flex your hand and after that the Make sure the positions of the forearm is natural. And after that, ask the patient to do the internal and external rotate of the hand. Can you do the internal rotate your hand? It is for check at the pronations and relax. Degree again. And after that, can you do the external rotate of your hand? It's for check the supinations. So now I want to check the passive range of motions of the elbow. In here I want to check the flexion, extension, supination, and the pronations. So first I want to check the flexion and extension of the elbow. So the patient position is sitting and after that the uh, one hand, our hand is fixate the humerus or stabilize the humerus. And for check the flexions, other hand we can grip the distal of the forearm. We can do passively flexion of the elbow and after that do the extensions of the elbow after that i want to check the supination and the pronations so first we bring the elbow to 90 degree and our hand we can fixate the humerus and other hand in the distal of the forearm in here with the nature of the forearm we bring to the supinations we bring in the external rotate of the forearm and for the pronations is internal rotation of the forearm. Okay, now I want to check the muscle strain of the elbow extensions. So first is we start from the grade three with the fascia position in the supine positions and our position as a examiner on the side that one hand to assess. So after that, we bring the shoulder in the 90 degree of the flexions and after that, the elbow is fully flexions and after that, our one hand is stabilized on the arm area and ask the patient to do the extension movement. Can you do extension? Okay, thank you. So for the grade 3, we don't give any resistance. For the grade 4, we give us some resistance on the middle of the forearm. Can you do the extend your elbow? Fully, fully, okay. For the grade 5, we give a maximum resistance in the distal of the forearm. Can you do extend your elbow? Okay. Thank you. 
Okay, now I want to perform the muscle strain of the elbow extension in the grade 2. So the patient position is a sitting and the examiner in the behind of the patient. First, we bring the shoulder is a 90 degree, it's for eliminate the gravity and after that, uh, our hand, one hand is support the arm and the positions of the elbow in the flexion positions and we ask the patient to do the range of motion or elbow extension by herself. Okay, can you extend your elbow? Okay, thank you. And now I want to check for the elbow extension in the grade 1. The position is the same. It's a lying supine, the patient lying supine, and our positions in the side that we want to assess. And first, we can say is the shoulder in the flexion position 90 degree and the elbow in the fully flexion and after that we just palpated the extensor muscle of the elbow in here the tricep brachii so can you contract your muscles okay if we feel at the contraction in the extensor of the elbow so it means the patient has a grab one if we don't feel it, the any contraction of the muscles, so the patient is have a grade zero. So now I want to perform the muscle strain of the elbow flexions. We start from the grade three. It means the patient can do the full range of motion of the elbow flexions, and this is without the resistance and with the gravity. So first, the patient position is a sitting position and the examiner in the side that the hand wants to assess. First, we stabilize the humerus area is above the elbow and after that, we ask the patient to do the full range of motion of the flexion. Okay, thank you. So for the grade 4, we give a resistance in the mid of the forearm. Okay. And for the grade 5, we can give a resistance in the distal of the forearm. So after that, the next is uh, for the muscle strength of the elbow flexion grade 2. The patient position is still some, it's a sitting position. And the examiner in the behind of the patient. And we bring the shoulder, it's a 90 degree, it's for eliminate the gravity. And after that, the elbow in the extension positions we support the the arm with our hand and after that ask the patient to do the elbow flexion Thank you. so for the muscle strength of the elbow flexion in the grade one the patient position is a sitting and the examiner in the side that the hand want to assess so first is we palpate the flexor of the muscle in here in the cubital fossa area in the middle area it's insertion of the bicep tendon and on the medial side is the insertion of the brachioradialis and for the lateral side is the insertion of the brachialis and we ask the patient after we feel it we ask the patient to contract the muscle by Flex the elbow as much as she can. And if we feel that the contraction of the muscle, it means the patient has a grade 1. But if we don't feel it and the contraction of the muscle, it means the patient has a grade 0. So thank you for watching. And we hope that you can gain some information by our video. Thank you. Bye-bye.